Thank you. It seems I'm the only one who doesn't use uh, PowerPoint. When you talk about the pathologies of power, you better don't use PowerPoint because it can also develop into something pathological. Uh, I was introduced as uh, someone whom you know as a politician. I would say rather a failed politician. But failed politicians are the most decent ones, the most respectable ones. And actually, we are a very good group, good company. My theory is that failed politicians make excellent philosophers, excellent political theorists, excellent historians. In everything, we excel. To start with Plato, the prince of philosophers, who tried very hard to get influence, to get power, and he failed miserably. I was in a good position to observe things. I've been an ambassador, a minister, even vice president of the ruling party. So I was able to see from a very close distance many crazy people and also to observe myself. My thesis is very simple. I, I, my, the thesis is that um, all of us entrusted with power can develop some kind of pathology of power. And in all fields, not only politics, also economic power, there are people who get very rich and lose their minds. There, there is also academic power. I'm a professor myself, I know that there are professors who think they know everything. That's also a form of pathology of power. Also media power, ecclesiastic power, bishops are sometimes terrible, and so on and so forth. So in all fields of human activity, in all fields where there is power to be exercised, there is a risk of developing pathologies of power. My main focus today is what I call the full package of power, big power. Big power, the full package of power, includes having a budget, a serious budget to, to spend money, the power to make decisions, the power to hire and to fire, the power to influence other people's careers, and last but not least, the power to represent, to speak in the name of a big organization, of a big corporation, of a big party, even of a country. So this is what I call the full package of power. Of course, there are also other forms of power, small power. Small power can also be pathological. But I will focus on the full package of power. And I have three explanations of why the full package of power develops pathologies of power. The first reason is related to the very functioning of power, the dynamic of power. The more you have power, the more you need a protecting wall around you. This is the very logic of the exercise of power. The more you have power, the more important is the wall of protection around you. This isolates you. You need to be protected because you are exposed. That it's a necessity. But this wall of protection also isolates you and it explains a very important thing, that power holders tend to lose contact with reality. They tend to lose ground. They tend to lose the sense of reality. That's the first point. The second is um, that the uh, exercise of big power, of the full package of power, is very much like the use of cocaine. I, I didn't try both. I tried only power. I, I did sniff power, but 
be, believe me, I did not sniff coke. But I read books about the impact of cocaine on the functioning of the brain, and it's exactly the same. It has an impact on the level of neurotransmitters in our brain. You are constantly high, artificially high, and this is also that something that I can talk about from my own experience. When you lose power, it's like coming off. It's, it's, it's like stopping the use of cocaine. You get depressed, usually. A third aspect is that not only power makes people crazy, but usually crazy people desire power. You need to have a certain structure of personality. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm talking from my own experience. Uh, you know, you can see some signs from a very early age. People who desire power have a certain structure of character, a certain psychological structure. Being more narcissistic, they like being on stage, for example, so thank you very much. Um, there are various uh, aspects like this that can explain the desire of power. Ambition doesn't come from nowhere. So to sum up, the central issue here is the losing of the sense of reality. We, for, coming from various uh, directions, various causes that explain this fundamental problem of the loss of the sense of reality. Now, there is a whole catalog of pathologies of power. We don't have time for this. Maybe we can plan for the next uh, TEDx meetings. We have time for 10 more years to talk about the various aspects and the various pathologies of power. But I will just mention a few of them. There is, for example, people who cannot make decisions, who are chronic, chronically undecided. Uh, these are people who um, are becoming a little bit childish in the exercise of power. There is an effect of infantilization on power holders. There is a very nice uh, phrase in a wonderful movie with Louis de Funès, La folie des grandeurs the uh, delusions of power. And Funès says, uh, mais qu'est-ce que je vais devenir? Je suis ministre, je ne sais rien faire. So, what am I going to do? I'm a minister, I can't do anything. Because around the hold power holder, there is this wall of protection that can become like a cocoon, a protecting cocoon. Then you have, of course, the ecocentric and Psychotera um, uh, the pathological decision makers, people who make all the time decisions, they believe they know everything, they are at the other extreme. You have megalomaniacs, many megalomaniacs. I have many megalomaniacs among my friends. One of them told us in a small circle of friends, you know, I have the intimate conviction that providence is guiding my steps in life, of course, towards the presidency. It's not the one who got elected, finally. <laughs> then there is cruelty, sad sadism. There are many sadic people among power holders, uh, and that's less nice. No, it's not a matter of laughter, because sometimes it ends up with millions of dead people, stemming from the same uh, problem, the problem of the loss of the sense of reality. And finally, corruption, because we talk all the time about corruption. Cor the corrupt person only apparently um, thinks rationally. He, he thinks rationally in a context that is completely irrational. So that's also an interesting pathology of power. 
This is, so, uh, very briefly, a catalog of the various forms of pathologies of power. And um, uh, I would tell you now in the second part of uh, this talk that there is hope. The good news is that there are remedies, there are antidotes against the pathologies of power. Maybe in the future, people will, scientists will invent some pill against uh, the pathologies of power, but we are not yet there. Psychotherapy works, psychoanalysis works. What I'm going to say is more about the classical pharmacopoeia, so the classical pharmacy against pathologies of power, because the, the problem of power has been at the heart of humanistic culture since Homer. In the Greek tragedies, it's all about hubris, the excess of power. In Aeschylus, in Sophocles, in Euripides, it's all about power and the excess of power. But what is most important as a treatment is to be aware. That's the first step. Most power holders deny they have a problem with power. I, I lost some friends who have power or had power by telling them that they had lost uh, the sense of reality, they had, that they had become crazy. They did not appreciate. You know, usually people who have power and get crazy don't appreciate to be told that there is something going on. So this is denial, what is called in, uh, psycho in psychology, denial. The first thing is to be aware of the dangers of the risks uh, related to the exercise of power. And to be vigilant, lucidity towards yourself and vigilance are the, the most important things, the first steps in curing the pathologies of power. Of course, as I told you, the knowledge of history is also very important, Re thinking about how in the past people also have lost uh, to some extent or to a large extent the sense of reality. One last thing that is extremely important is humor. I think that humor is one of the most important antidotes uh, against the pathologies of power. Uh, and because through humor you take distance from yourself. There is a saying that I like very much, a, a phrase in Montaigne, in one of his essays. He says, even on the most elevated throne in the world, you are still seated on your ass. That's humor, and that's a very profound thought about our humanity and even our animality, so to say. But when you can laugh about yourself, when you can take distance from yourself, you are saved as a power holder. We all know from church and from the Gospels the, uh, the beginning of uh, Jesus' uh, Sermon on the Mount. Blessed are the poor, blessed are the meek, blessed are the peacemakers, blessed are the persecuted, and so on and so forth. But, most important, blessed are those who laugh about themselves because they will laugh forever. Thank you.